Hi folks, so I'm going to record a video that is going to demo how to do a, a investigation of a live system, so a system that's running, trying to figure out what's going on in the system, what are the processes that are running, what network's being used, um, and a whole bunch of other things that you would look at if you were trying to investigate a system that may have been compromised. Uh, this is a companion piece to the video that I've just recorded about the concepts involved and things to think about while doing the investigation. So let's have a look. <clears throat> so one of the um, things to think about while doing an investigation is um, having a record of what you're doing on that system. So one of the ways that you can do that is um, basically using the script command. Um, and so if you use script, you can use it to keep a record of all of the uh, commands that you're running. Um, so the biggest disadvantage of doing this is that um, obviously you're storing um, all of the commands that you're running. And in this case, I'm storing them on the system that I'm investigating. The risk is obviously that an attacker notices that there's a file there that is logging the actions of someone investigating. So that's something to think about. Um, but if we if we do this, then, um, you know, we start looking at um, the system and what's on there. When we finish, we can press uh, Control D or Type Exit. And um, then we can look at the contents of our log uh, at the end, and it will show us you know, all of these commands that run. And it shows you when the start and finish times of, of your investigations. So that's quite a helpful thing uh, to do. And you see, it's. Um, you know, includes the, the colors and um, command, terminal commands and things as well. If we use less to access the, the log, um, by default, it will just show you the, um, the escape sequences of those, um, you know, changing colors and things like that. Um, but if we want to, we can um, tell it to include the raw output and then you'll see the colors as well. So, um, so when you start your investigations, it's usually a pretty good idea to start by looking at confirming what the current time is, um, which is um, pretty straightforward. We can uh, just have a look at, at that. Um, it's also um, you know, you should check that against your, um, you know, an independent source, like check your own time and check that that is actually accurate. Um, host, you can also look at like host name, version of Linux and uptime. So if we look at the host name, we can see what, you know, the name of this computer is. Um, we can use, um, look at the information about the running system um, and that will tell us you know that it's a Linux system uh, obviously we knew that already uh, like the version of, of the kernel that's loaded um, the fact that we're using in this case a Debian system like that's the distribution um, the computer architecture which is 64-bit um, and you know so there's some, some useful information to know there um, obviously, the fact that 64-bit system might, you know, we might use some slightly different tools, um, and <clears throat> it's a good idea to have a look at here. You can see, uh, in this case, um, it's not been up for long. This um, this system's been up for 26 minutes, um, but obviously, if you're looking at a server that should be on all the time, it's useful just to have a look and see whether that. Um, confirms your suspicions about what's going on. So, you know, the things that we're going to be looking at now, we want to know what processes are running, what network usage is going on, what ports are open, listening and connected, 
Um, want to know about network configuration, like um, like routes, app cache, DNS settings, whether there are any files that are, you know, what files are being opened by what processors, what users are currently logged into the system. So to start with, let's have a look at the network settings. So um, you can look at network settings using the ifconfig command. Um, well, ifconfig is actually um, like a deprecated command that usually you still see on a Linux system, but I have recently updated all of these um, uh, offer the offering system. I'm quite surprised. Ah, here you go. So, um, yeah, so it is it's still here. So we can see here um, the details of the, the network that's as it is. That's all pretty much as to be expected. It's got the flags here. Um, and in this case, there's not really anything unusual. There's uh, IP addresses here. Um, this is the loopback interface. So that's just like the to talk to ourselves, uh, the, the local machine. And this is the IP address that we have on this um, interface to other VMs. Um, so that's that's fine. You can also use IP um, A, which is the newer command to check uh, that same information. So that's IP address, um, and that shows us uh, that same information in a slightly different format. So we can see here those same flags are being listed, which describes the state that the system um, that the network interface cards in and um, we can see that the IP address that it has um, and that's that's all fine. So one of the reasons we want to look at that though is if you look at this example in my slides here, um, if you see that Promisc is listed there then that would indicate that our network is currently in a promiscuous mode which is suspicious because it wouldn't normally be the case unless the system was trying to monitor the network traffic. So if you start a network sniffer, for example, it will typically set the network interface card to be promiscuous, which means that if there's any traffic on that network segment, um, then it will list the, um, it will receive uh, and process those, process those packets. So, <clears throat> TCP dump installed, we don't. Um, okay, so moving on. Um, so there's a, a number of different commands you can use to list all the processes on the system. Um, and let's have a look at a couple of them. So there's the ps command. Uh, and you can, um, you can filter on the user a few different ways. You can basically list everything and then try and grep for the username or you can just use ps minus u and then the username. So if we do here, but if we just use ps, it starts off by listing um, just the processes within this like session. And if you use um, aux is the most common uh, that you'll use, which is basically just list all the processes. Um, and that gives you like a detailed view of all of them. Um, so it's um, concat it's concatenated <clears throat> this user name because it's quite a long one, but um, you can see here it lists, lists the user along with the the commands that are used and um, you know the details of each of those. If we scroll up to the top, uh, we can see the headings for each of those fields. Um, CPU and memory percentage usage is obviously quite interesting uh, a lot of the time. There's nothing here that's particularly resource intensive. Um, CPU is at 0% for everything, so nothing very exciting happening here. Um, nothing research inten uh, resource intensive anyway. Um, and then, you know, the, the actual command. Um, so, you know, the if we just wanted to list all the processes, uh, so dash u run by root, um, then this is the list of processes currently run by root, and there's a number of flags that we can add to that to get all sorts of information out of that. <clears throat> Top 
is the same kind of information, but it basically uh, updates automatically and it give and it base automatically sorts by CPU usage, so you can see what the top uh, processes are that are using the CPU, um, and that can be useful. Uh, you can also sort by memory, um, and uh, so yeah, there's a number of different things you can do, and there's lots of sh keyboard shortcuts and things, but. Um, Basically, it shows you a list of all the processes that are um, running, and it updates it um, on a on a poll. The polls uh, updating every few seconds. You can change all the options, but it tells you about processes running. Um, K Syscard is a um, ah, it's because I'm running through. Um, is a graphical one if I just open a new terminal because I'm S actually SSH into a separate server at the moment. But if I run that on um, on this system, um, it's basically similar to what you get on Windows with the um, terminal manage uh, task manager thing, um, uh, process manager thing. You can see like a list of all the different. Programs are it's basically similar to what we just saw in top, except that um, it's a bit more graphical, and you can see some some graphs and things. Um, you can actually. Um, all right, I've not actually tested this, so uh, this may not work. But if I instead connect with SSH with a dash X. Uh, and then try the same thing. No, okay, never mind. Um, so you there you can get SSH to um, basically tunnel through um, to use the X window. Um, and I don't want to spend too much time on this, but obviously looking at the manual page is usually a good place. Uh, it's capital X. <laughs> Lowercase is to disable the forwarding, okay, which is the opposite of what I, want, what I wanted. Um, so let's try one more time with a capital X. Ah, here we go. So this program that we're looking at here is actually a graphical tool that is currently running on the remote server but displaying on the local system. So um, you can see it looks a bit different to the when I was running it directly. If maybe we look at them side by side, it might be, it might be interesting. So um, you can see here this is the one that's actually running uh, showing this local system uh, resource usage. This one is actually showing us the remote system's resource usage. And the this program is actually running, you know, the program itself is running on the compromised server, but the display uh, is, is showing uh, that, that window on this system that um, I've remoted from, and that's being forwarded over SSH. Um, the X Windows system um, details are being forwarded on over the network. So that, that is kind of cool. Um, and if you really <clears throat> prefer your graphical tools, it allows you to use some of those um, while interacting with a um, remote server. Um, so that's kind of cool. You could open, um, you know, you could even open up or other programs uh, that way as well. But basically, any program that way. Um, Okay, so um, let's see what what should we look at next. So, network usage. So, netstat is a command that you'll also find on Windows. Although the um, I believe the um, flags and things are different, so you need to unlearn them um, in order to like port this knowledge across. Uh, I think the dash a is the same on Windows, but I think some of the others are different. So, netstat will basically show us. 
um, it shows us the um, network connections um, across the um, the basically all the network connections on this system. So where this is on the server that we're investigating. Um, if we add T to it, it just lists TCP because this is also listing a bunch of um, Unix um, uh, network uh, ports, which is not you know is not usually what you're interested in. We just want to look at the actual remote um, connections. So if you add dash T, it can make it a bit easier. You can see here there's a bunch of things that are listening on the network. So we've got an FTP server on this system. There's an SSH server, which is what we're connected to at the moment. POP3 server. So that's an email um, server. Um, yeah, there's a few things going on. Um, <clears throat> if you want to see the numbers rather than the um, the names of the ports, uh, because actually it's only giving you the name of that port number actually. So if it was something else running on that port, it still just says FTP, even if it wasn't actually an FTP server running. It's just that's the name that it has for that number. But if you add the, the N, then it gives you the number instead, which is usually what you want um, uh, if you already know the names of them anyway, although maybe you want to use both if you've forgotten some of that information. We can't remember that one um, 10, 110 is for um, email, for example, pop three email. Um, so the P um, is to get the actual process name, which in this case it's not listing it, but um, it gives you the the program name that's running if it if it has it available. Um, you can get similar information with this command, with lsov. So lsov is a command that, um, I don't know, maybe I need to see that. Um, yeah, so lsov is a command that can um, look at the resources that different processes are using, uh, and that includes networking. So uh, actually, we missed a few things on the last command I ran because I was just looking at TCP, but there's actually some UDP traffic there as well. Um, and yeah, there's the TCP connections. And obviously, we would want to match um, you know, what these different tools are telling us and compare them um, if we're trying to investigate a system that's compromised. We will want to look at whether or not these different tools are giving us the same picture of the system. Um, Nmap is obviously the um, uh, uh, network scanner. Uh, if it's installed, yep, we can use it to scan our own system, um, which, by the way, will give you different results to scanning this system from a uh, remote. If I scanned the come from this server from my own system, I might get different results because there'll be firewall rules in place. But if we look scan it locally, then usually the firewall rules would be configured not to apply. Um, and then you would see all of the um, all the ports that could be connected to from the outside world. Uh, and obviously Nmap has a whole bunch of options as well. I'm just giving a over quick overview of these different commands. Um, and so, you know, think about whether the reports make sense. Is this what you expect to be running on those systems? Um, we're going to look at the network configuration of these systems. So, the if you look at the route, uh, so some of these commands you need to run as root. Um, very simple routing table <clears throat> on this machine. Um, basically, there's one destination that it, um, you know, it, yeah. So very straightforward. Um, but some machines will have much more complicated um, routing tables. And you want to compare, check that it actually matches what you want, because you know if someone's changed the way that your machine is configured to route through the internet, then that could be an indication of uh, um, compromise. You can also look at the ARP table. Um, again, let's do it as, as root. In this case, again, very simple. Um, in fact, 
was that its own IP address. So literally the only, I oh know it's not. So um, there's one other system. Oh, that's probably this. This is probably this system. Um, yeah. So the, literally the only um, thing uh, IP to ARP mapping that it has is um, the system that we've connected from. Um, but you know, when you see more complicated ARP uh, caches and things, then, then um, it might be an indication of an attack. Something like a man in the middle attack um, will involve, you know, can involve um, like setting um, or spoofing ARP responses. And that's something that you should check for. <clears throat> um, file usage. So LS of will actually tell you the um, files opened by different um, processes. So if we just do sudo uh, ls of, it shows you all the processes on the um, computer along with what uh, files they have open. So that's quite interesting. So you can see here the different programs and the files that are open. So this is really helpful if you've got some processes that came up when you were doing a process listing and you don't know what they are. And then it can be useful to look at what what they're actually what those processes are actually doing, what files have they got open. Are there any like sensitive files that are being accessed that you wouldn't expect to be accessed? So you know you can look through here. This is actually Yeah, there's quite a bit of output there, but you need to look through it and um Obviously, you can you probably want to write that out to a file so that you can look at it later. Uh, well, as with most of these commands, actually, you, usually what you, you know you'd want to you can script a bunch of this stuff to happen and to pro, you know basically save a copy of all this stuff to look through, or you can you know basically do what we've been doing, which is running the commands. Uh, but in this case, there is so much that uh, you might want to run it through less so that you can actually you know scroll through that output and have a look. <clears throat> so we also want to probably look at the users that are logged into the system. Um, so we can do things like uh, look at users. Um, there's who and w all basically provide similar information about like the people that are currently logged into the system. Um, there, it's worth saying that these commands actually write to a file. Um, and so, it, and a, you know, a, an intruder can modify that information and therefore it wouldn't show up in the, using those commands. But then again, you know, the, uh, and it's, it's a, the, there's a chance that the, a rootkit would Basically, lie to PS, but not think that you'd be using the like these commands, and therefore have missed the fact that the information is also logged into UTAP. Um, so you can you can query that information. Um, but there's a lot more stuff that you can find offline by looking at log files and things. But that's just an over that was an overview of some of the information that you find. Um, doing a like live analysis, uh, looking at the processes that are running, and um, hopefully that gives you a good feel for the sorts of um, system commands and things you can use to try and extract that information and um, try and understand what's happening on a, on a live system.